for the talk. Uh, fourth consecutive year. Uh, second time in Burjman. How is the signal? The same place. How is the signal? Thanks to Burjman Mall. Oh, the signal. First of all, no you have an amazing no opportunity to give us this B Hub. <laughs> and um, having the wonderful photos displayed all across that, you know, like the veranda of, towards the uh, business towers. So, I don't think I need to uh, introduce myself to any one of you because all of I need to ask me. A little bit. A little bit of introduction? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Mark, please come. Um, iBrain Connect, uh, we started in the year 2019, just before the corona. As I always say, we are corona baby. So that's why we are so strong for vaccine uh, and many uh, talks. So 2021 onwards, we started uh, a con kind of concept called photo talks. So many people ask like, photo talks is just like a talk. It is not just a talk. It's been uh, given as a terminology as photo talk, but we do seminars into photography. We do workshops, we do photo walks. And we do master classes into photography. All these things, one event is called as photo talk. So likewise, from 2021 till today, we did 224 events, physical events. Thank you. <laughs> and these events are done with the support of, like you can see here, a college of people who did our events until 2022. So we are yet to add 2023 and till today, which is, this one is 84. So total we did with 115 individual and they all are from 30 different countries. So our aim is we look into all aspects of content creation. It is not just photography. It is not just videography. It is related to content creation. Like we all are content creators these days. So that's why, you know, we always say as a tagline, your one-stop destination partner for content creation is iBrand Connect. We got seven brands into distribution. That is HNY, Leo Photo, PGY Tech, Shimoda, Tourbox, Vice Union, and Video Spinny. So along with that, we started a store called shop.ibrandconnect.com where you can get anything and everything into content creators equipments at the same time with the support of all these professional uh, people we can create your needs into the kind of you know complete solution because if someone asks me can you create a podcast studio yes we have a solution for that if you want to do a live streaming rd is here <laughs> to get the kind of right approach because he is that person who is into it. Now if someone has asked me, can you create a very aggressive tool? I have many people over here. <laughs> so who can talk about, who can, who has a kind of, you know, caliber in handling those kind of things. So it is a kind of connection. That's the, the main reason we call us as I brand connect. It is not just into photography. We connect different brands different influences, different intellectual people associate with different organization, respective of government or private, schools, universities. So the, there is no end to it, this connection. And these connections made us a lot of uh, business relationships as well, not just only into photography, in different ways. Now, if I tell you, being a photography person, I was once dealing with an aircraft sale. So this is something different. Like, you know, how I got this connection? This kind of audience. And from there, we got connected. And by chance, some Russian guy want to buy a Dornier aircraft. The, you know, the, the route came in at the end to us and then we had some sort of discussions and finally it happened. So this is something called, you know, like it is not just a kind of a platform for photographers and content creators. 
is for everyone. All right. So support us, follow us, iBrand Connect, and uh, let us go this journey to the next level. Actually, I'm so sad today. You know why? Because today is the last day. Uh, I was just telling Ankita, uh, she is the community uh, community engaging men manager, right? For Burjuman Mall. And um, also, for all of you, this is an amazing hub. It's been created by Burjuman. And, um, you know, they are open for any kind of activities over here. You can connect with her. As per the kind of queue, you get the space. And I'm going to take weekly one day from you. Bonus for me. Now, we'll create this area as an engaging area for uh, once in a week. And people, like, you know, we spread the news all across the world saying that on that particular day, whoever is interested in content creation, like we had some discussion with my, myself and Subodh about it, like maybe some portfolio review day, maybe some slide show, slide first, maybe someone come and talk about certain aspect, like there are, like Florian is here, um, maybe another one or two months. So the kind of crazy thing that he did for the last two years, he can express that to many people. No, okay, so I'll, I just want to just mention like out of the 20 days, I invited all of them for today's event, but unfortunately many of them already had some sort of sessions. Now right now we have Florian here, uh, LD here, and who else? No. So, no one else, yeah. So, which means like around 17 of them are already having many engagements. Now, I want to introduce my friend, Subodh. Please come. <laughs> Because today's session, as the last session, and as a, as a finale, I'm, I was so happy because, you know, he was just going for the Holly trip uh, last week. Of course, we got connected in many other ways, like, you know, we traveled many places together. Holly. Holly, yeah. and plus we went to Germany for that yeah. photo kina. And, uh, you know, he, uh, like uh, that time, you know, one of his pictures were displayed in the photo kina. That was all, you know, like memories and Big stories, stories yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so he was just going for the crazy Holi festival. And then I asked, uh, suppose, like, why don't we do the finale with you? And he said, okay, let us do that. And he, he uh, also got many things to talk because, you know, we all had tough times during the corona time. And, you know, like uh, four, four years was a kind of time, like, you know, there was nothing uh, in front of us, but, you know, we, we were fighting really hard till day. Like the day that we started uh, the business until day, like, you know, it's 24 seven. So I always tell uh, to my clients saying that you go at any point of time, anything that you record, uh, my phone is always on. WhatsApp to me, Instagram, and, you know, like we make it uh, super. And uh, Subodh sir, yes. the right. complete platform is yours now, but I'll come at the end to sure, sure. thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Let me thank just pull it up. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, everyone, again. And thanks, Burjman. Uh, one last thing. We have a contest. Um, that contest, the last day of submission of pictures is April 30th. The, the theme, uh, the subject of the contest is right in the heart. You can see that, you know, it's mentioned is right in the heart. So what is right in the heart? So that's Burjiman Mall's tagline. So, you know, we all know there are two Dubais, like Bar Dubai and Dera Dubai. So Burjiman situated in the heart of Bar Dubai. So you can create something related to the subject, okay, as a photo and see, it, it becomes a kind of challenge for judgment, right? Like everyone say, oh, this picture is being corrected with Adobe Photoshop, things like that. Now this time what we are doing, you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> you can use AI. You can use any editing softwares. Create your own imagination on that particular picture. And then post those pictures. Tag Burjman, iBrand Connect, hashtag Iftar Photo Talk 2024. And then send this picture to ibcsales at gmail.com. Uh, before 30th, but while sending this picture, the corrected picture, we want to see the original picture also. Not just to pause, but just to understand, just to see, uh, you know, how, what kind of editing and creativity that you created. And then what's going to happen, maybe 1,000 people participate this, and we are going to have 64 pictures displayed over there in the veranda again, and uh, that's a great opportunity for all, all of you, right? The first prize winner get 10,000 dirhams, 
second prize winner get 5,000 dirhams and the third prize winner get 2,000 dirhams. This is amazing, right? So everyone should uh, uh, participate this. You know, just speak to your friends, relatives, one picture per person. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, son. Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for coming. You know. And I hope the iftar was good. I, if you didn't have food, oh, please yeah. do have. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, to One thing which I forgot to mention. I have to thank Yellow Chili. Yeah, please, just please stand up, man. You know, so, so, so sorry about it. Huh. Yeah. I reminded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Then you know, when he saw, when he, when he says about 20 days of this amazing food. And I want to just invite these two uh, gentlemen. Come, 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 come on, let's man. <laughs> and come on, come on, just man. Yeah. Just give a round of applause to them. Yeah. Come on, come on, quickly. Quickly, because you know, last, I, I just want to just yeah, please, please, yeah. please. please, please come. Yeah. Come, 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 come. It's a, it's a hug is the best thing, yeah? yeah. <laughs> come on. You know, their dedication. What something is missing here, you know, he, he he used to come and tell me, sir, this time I just, five minutes. He was running and getting stuff back and uh, great job, guys. <laughs> okay. Now I want to, uh, now, okay, yeah, now you can go. You can, you can go. Chala? Ja sakta hai? Jana? Idhari kada jana? Ne, ne, ne. Now I want to invite my team, Ajish. Hey, hey. Ajish, uh, Surup, and my dear son, <laughs> Rutul. <laughs> he is working, but you know, whenever he gets time, you know, he keep coming and doing all this, uh, you know, all the artwork, you know, like within no time, creating, you know, tough job. <laughs> yeah, it's been done for me. A day. <laughs> immediately, immediately after the session, next day, posting the reels. This this man, newly joined, just two months. He was asking, can I take a leave tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, I, I have some friends in the international city, they are coming out there, you know, I want to take some leave. And I said, my dear, you'll get one week full day, full, full leave after this. <laughs> because this is a military operation, the 20 continuous days, right? And for sure, he's a, he knows about the stuff. Like he started like, you know, in 2020, when we started, he was my right hand all the time. And one year he worked with me, then I throw him out. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not creative enough. <laughs> not, not creative enough. Yeah, okay. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. And it was an amazing team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hang on. Ready. One, two. Okay, look here. No, no, super good. Ah, it's okay. Super cool. And one more thing, I just want to just invite Ankita here. No, no, you have to come, you know, because we had tough times, the negotiating. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Ankita. Yeah, because, you know, see, when we started negotiating all these things, you know, like Ankita just newly joined, I think, six months now, yeah? Six? No more. One year? Almost. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, like, um, so are you sure you'll be able to do this 20 days? Oh, it's okay. It'll happen. Where is my artwork? Artwork is not ready. <laughs> there are so many things that are not ready. Then I said, it'll happen. Because our operation is a military operation. I've been a military now person. Now I know. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, spent, I spent 10 years of my life in Indian Air Force as an aerial photographer. So I also did some military training. So, you know, <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you. Now it's your time. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. So again, Welcome and uh, thank you so much for joining. Yeah. I see a few familiar faces and many new faces, which is nice uh, to have. Otherwise, you'll be bored of my pictures. After iftar, maybe some of you will feel sleepy. If you want to sleep, feel free. <laughs> Other than my guys, you can't sleep. So photography A to Z is the topic. The reason I kept that name is because I was in between holy, like Shaji said. And he kept asking, what's the topic? What's the topic? Nothing is coming to my head. I told A to Z. 
and I had no idea what to present. So I just put that name and uh, then I was thinking about the topic. What do I say about A to Z of photography? Like Florian, I do all kinds of photography. You know, I'm not a portrait photographer. I was a portrait photographer. But now I do everything, wildlife, portrait, drones, astro, deep space. Just keep naming, I do everything. I, I thought, okay, maybe A to Z makes sense because I shoot everything. So that's what I'm gonna present. And I'm gonna talk about evolution as a photographer. This is a presentation which I did like two weeks back in uh, Nikon, in Exposure. It's a very new presentation, so I thought not many people have seen that. So at least those people who came that day to see this session are not here. So it's a fresh one for all, you, all of you guys. So I just thought maybe I'll show you the evolution of a photographer. How do you evolve as a photographer? Because when we start, we start for some reason. Maybe we like nature, maybe we like mountains, maybe you like flowers. You just started because you like something. Then you start evolving as a photographer. You grow with years and years of experience. You start adding layers by layers to your photography. And sometimes you just stick to one and evolve in that one particular genre, like landscape maybe. But sometimes you add many, many layers to your photography, like me. So as you can see in the picture itself, there's wildlife, there is the festival, like travel photography, and then there is portraits. So that is kind of giving you a feel of what kind of photography I do, which is everything. Just a quick introduction, I'm Subodh Shetty and uh, I've been shooting since 2010, non-stop. You know, when I say I, I shoot, I don't shoot like on a once in a month or once in two months. I shoot almost like I'm traveling all the time. That's what I do for a living. I do workshops, travel workshops. I take people along with me and teach them photography. We have fun and we come back new things. It's all about learning in my particular community. I have some of them here who travel with me. We all learn from each other. We travel together and make some great pictures. So that's what I do and that's the reason I don't stay still. I always travel because that's what makes me, you know, uh, if I don't travel like in COVID times, I was going crazy because it's such a habit of traveling every month. For the COVID, for the two years, you're stuck in one place. So that was kind of a hard time. And I'll talk about that as well, how that can help you evolve as well. So I'll, we'll talk about all that. And uh, moving on, evolve, that's the topic. And uh, how do you evolve as a photographer? You need to start somewhere. In my case, the reason I started photography is because I was bored in Dubai. You know, you come to Dubai, fresh to Dubai and you get all the salary and you're in a good place. What do you do with your time? You know, you're getting, working for five days, the next two days, what do you do? Drink at home? Oh, how much can you drink at home? So it eventually you come to a point where you start thinking, what do I do with my time? So that's how photography began. You know, the city is so beautiful and there's so much to shoot. Uh, and even not as a photographer, even as a non-photographer, there's so much to shoot in Dubai because it's such a organized, beautiful city. So that's what got me into photography. I started with a small Nikon 3100 beginner's camera because I was not sure because I had bought a guitar before thinking I'll learn music. I failed miserably. I thought maybe photography is another phase where you buy a camera and fail and then give up. So I bought a very cheap, easy to use camera, which is Nikon 3100. And these are all the pictures which eventually happened within the first six months because I met the right people. You know, one of the beautiful things about Dubai is it's a very small country, um, city. The community is very tight. You know, a photographer, it doesn't matter which corner of Dubai they are in, you eventually connect through Facebook or Instagram. You form a bond, you form a small little group, walk around and learn photography from each other. So within a matter of six months, I could make pictures like this. And that's what got me going, you know, like, okay, I have some talent maybe because my mom is an artist. There should be something in the DNA. So I thought maybe it's working. I can take up photography. That's when I evolved my camera to begin with. You can't just continue with the beginner's camera. So I got a bigger camera from Nikon and the journey continued. So I started here, mainly on the streets, streets of Dubai. Because initially I was shooting all the cityscapes, which is beautiful. But what I really connect to is people. When you walk the streets, have those local Vandiram Chai, sit among the people and talk about other stuff, and not, not the blinks, the other side of Dubai, which is Barjuman and surrounding Dera and Bar Dubai. This is really the heart of Dubai and it really attracts me a lot. I did a lot of street photography, also some nature walks in Razal Kaima and the beautiful skyline, of course. So you need to start somewhere. We all are in different, different phases. Maybe you are one year into photography, two years into photography. You'll be there somewhere in this phase right now. From there, you take it up to the next stage.
the most important thing is to shoot locally. Not everyone can travel all the time. I'm a full-time photographer. I can travel. There's no boss. I am the boss. I can ask, leave to myself and go anywhere I want. But most of you work somewhere and you have to ask a permission, limited number of days to take a leave, family commitments, blah, blah, blah. In that case, you need to shoot locally. You know, you need to sharpen your knife every day. You know, it's a, art is nothing but a thing of practice. If you don't practice, you go blunt. So sharpen it every single day, whenever you can, within the place you are in. And when you're blessed with Dubai to shoot, this. In, within Barjuman, you can walk around in the mall and make 20,000 pictures. <laughs> There's so much of opportunities within this one mall because it's very colorful, it's very organized, so much of patterns, so much of, you know, like reflections and all those things which comes along. Like this is in Dubai Mall. You know, when I don't travel, I rather shoot within the locality. This is in City Walk Dubai. Again, a modern mo mall kind of situation, but you can make pictures even in a mall. This is in Daira. This is somewhere in, I don't even remember, maybe Fujara or somewhere, <laughs> long, long back. So overall, this all for practice. These are not my portfolio worthy pictures, which I won't post on my website and all that. These are not that important to me, but this helps me learn things, how to see patterns, how to put a human element, how to read the light, how to control aperture, shutter speed, ISO, etc, etc, etc. It helps you sharpen your skill. Tomorrow when you travel, you don't have to fumble around in that particular place you went to for five days. You are already ready because you are practicing. So shooting locally is very, very important. And Dubai is not just about city. You know, you just walk out and you have all these beautiful uh, landscapes, you know, desert scapes. This is in Sharjah. We all know Maliha. Maliha was, is like my second home. All of my friends know. I literally, when Corona came, half the time I was in Maliha. Because it's such a beautiful place to explore. So much of opportunities. So these are all during those COVID times, you know, where you get an opportunity to explore the natural side of uh, UAE. I could sit at home and say it's COVID, this virus, let me sit at home and relax. No, you have to go out and make some pictures because it won't last forever. The COVID will go, you will travel. When you travel, you have to be sharp. And this is what makes you sharp. Experiment here. This again, Maliha. I'm sure most of you know the eye of Maliha. You know, the imagination, again, your mind, you know, you have to, once you do so much of photography, you start thinking about these things. Otherwise, it's just a simple little mountain with a gap in between. But when you think about it as a photographer, once you visit a place over and over again and practice your skill, you start thinking, how about putting a sun? How about putting a moon? You know, how about a plane passes through it? You put 100 possibilities, one of them will work eventually. So this was a moon day for me. And here, I'll come back to this picture later. This again in uh, Abu Dhabi, you know, it's towards the Alkua Liwa side. So that's available right in our backyard, you know, just 200 kilometers, which is nothing, in a beautiful, good roads. We can reach there in no time. And these are all waiting to be shot locally. This again, during COVID, uh, Maliha, again, my favorite place. New Year's, COVID, you can't go out, this virus, but again, New Year is New Year, people come together. But again, there's a good chance you'll get COVID. Why to struggle there and watch the Burj Khalifa fireworks? Why not make your own fireworks? That was the theme here. Me and my friend, two of us, took a car, went to Maliha, some small little fireworks of our own, <laughs> small tree, a camp, and we made a picture. The, the title was Create Your Own Fireworks. So tough times create some good pictures. You know, This is during the COVID times. But again, the point is in your back, backyard. So moving on, this is in Razal Kaima, somewhere in Razal Kaima, Fujara side. That's the storm is happening in the Oman side of the, you know, it's in the border. The tree is in UAE, the storm is in the other side, even during COVID again, during COVID. So basically, again, it's a matter of practice. Tomorrow I may travel to, let's say, Himalaya and something like this shows up. I don't have to break my head. I know how to manage this. Okay, lightning, there's some stars, how to manage this situation, what aperture, what ISO. Everything is ready because I practice here. We also have wildlife. Dubai is again blessed with some uh, nice opportunities of all kinds. City, there's landscape and nightscape and there's also wildlife which you can practice. Before doing wildlife photography, this was my place to practice. I know I'll go to Kenya, I'll shoot all the beautiful animals. But I don't want to go there and figure out how to shoot animal, how to focus on an animal, how to compose an animal. Rather practice here, you know, we do, again during COVID. We went out here and every single day we would go and practice out here and create some pictures of this kind. 
and cityscapes, never ending cityscapes, we are just talking about rooftops, we love rooftops in Dubai, if Barjuman gives us some rooftop, we'll love to come up and shoot, uh, so yeah, these are all from various rooftops of Dubai, again, our backyard, another wonderful opportunity to, to practice, this is Barjuman by the way, yeah, this is your building, <laughs> shot from the other side, that hotel in the other side. So these are all other pictures which you can shoot locally. All I'm trying to say here is so much of opportunities, varieties of opportunities in Dubai to shoot. So after that comes, of course, traveling. You know, you need to travel, not just for your photography, just to open your mind. Lucky guy is here, you know, he travels 42 countries in two years. I can't be that lucky, but I do travel quite enough. <laughs> so travel changes everything. You know, I do a lot of travel workshops, as you can see on the screen. Every month there is a place that we go to and uh, fortunately people do join and we have great fun, great, make great pictures and come back. So travel completely changes the game because uh, however beautiful this country is, good for practice, but once you travel you not only see beautiful places, you get to meet beautiful people, understand beautiful cultures, etc, etc. There are so many perks to traveling. So like these things, you know, this was an average base camp. I would never ever thought of going to these places if not for a camera in my hand. You know, that little gear in your hand can change your life literally. That little box, <laughs> the magic of that box. Otherwise, I would never walk 30, 40 kilometers to reach this place. But now it's fun. You know, you, are, you can't breathe. Your skin is breaking up. You're completely tanned. But it's fun because you know you're going to get pictures. Photographers, you have to be a bit crazy. Also, travel lets you do this, you know, meet so many wonderful people from across the world, so many cultures, so many different uh, characters, and at the end of the day, all human, you know, everyone is just the same. And cultures and festivals of India especially, you know, uh, being an Indian, I consider myself very lucky, I don't have to take a visa, such a beautiful country, it's just unbelievable number of opportunities that we have from corner to corner. I've been exploring for last... 15 years, the India and the madness of India, maybe I covered 10% in 15 years. There's so much more. It's an incredible country. So the travel lets you do that. And the travel also lets you do this, you know, like I create my own theme whenever I travel. I kept meeting so many different cultural, you know, uh, beautiful people from different cultures. I was like, how do I bring them all together with pictures? You know, that's when I started doing this candlelight shots. I go to, like here, it's in Varanasi. The Hinduism, here there is another culture from tribal corner of uh, Assam. This is from Nagaland, this is from Ladakh, Himalayas. So all different cultures coming together with one theme, which is candle. So your mind evolves as you travel more and more. And of course, I after COVID, thanks to COVID, uh, however bad that phase was, it helped me get into these things, which is wildlife. I never thought I would ever do wildlife photography. Before COVID, I was a portrait photographer, that's it. But after COVID, so many layers have added on because life changes, you know, with time. You have to survive as a photographer. So these are all, I'll come to all these pictures. Uh, so that's a part of evolution, which is to travel. If you travel, you definitely evolve as a photographer. And you need to polish your vision. Uh, when you start photography, everything looks good. You just point a camera, take a shot, amazing shot because background is blurred, eyes are sharp, great. It's a fantastic picture. But as you evolve, you realize that's not photography. Photography is much more than that. Photography is when you can control not just the person in the frame, but everything in the background. You know, even the background plays a role as much as the person in the foreground. So that's something you learn as you travel. Initially, this was my shots, you know, in 2011, I took this shot. I thought it's a great shot. I thought it's the award-winning shot. But now when I look at it, I'm like, nah, it's not really because the light is very harsh. The background is all messy. It's just an opportunity missed, rather. You evolve from there. After two, three years, I got to this point where everything is clean. The background is controlled. The eyes are sharp and the colors are good. Composition is good. So you evolve from here to here. Even that happens with practice. More you travel, more you get to do these things and change your perspective. Same here, a old guy with a nice beard, who cares about background, just take a shot, 50 mm, 1.8, all good. But then you realize it is not good. <laughs> the good is this, where you control the background, when you control the light, and that's again part of evolution. Same girl, same day, but it, I, I just want to show how far you can come with the same person, you know, just the same girl, sitting in a normal like home clothes or maybe school uniform or whatever 
that could be a picture everything is great you know she looks great but then you can make the same girl look like this just by evolving your mind that's the job of a photographer to find a subject and figure out how we can make them look a million dollar so that's the evolution same girl again just a bit of different compositions and you can see the world of difference it makes <coughs> here i could have shot this kid right here she was with me manasa was with me on this day i remember i could have shot her, shot him right here nice background but how can you make it better just shift him from here put him here and the background goes dark so very simple and easy uh, way to do it again part of evolution and also part of evolution is to learn the light how light behaves you know this is the same kid different light here the light is coming from the back the it's very harsh the kid doesn't look really that good you know my job is to make them look a million dollar so how do you do that just by shaping the light change the perspective and look at how far you come just by small evolution of uh, light same here lights coming from tops lights coming from two sides you learn all these things more you travel more you shoot and more you uh, understand how it works once you learn to do all these close up portraits this is another thing that you can do to evolve your journey in portraits which is stepping back you know instead of going super close that's great you can make a close portrait but always think what happens if you come a step back if there's something in the background which adds on and adds to the story why not take a step back this is a close up it looks fantastic but then come few steps back use the stuff in our home there's a nice light coming in everything is perfect and go for a shot this is called environmental portraits again part of evolution before i used to only do close up portraits it took a maybe 3 years for me to learn that process of stepping back you know not just about the face show the environment so that's again part of evolution same close up beautiful light everything is great but then step back beautiful colors you know warm and cool tones the kids playing around and the lady sitting there you show the environment where they come from so again part of learning part of evolution step back always beautiful portrait close up but then show her home there's a kettle there's a fireplace the lady is in the background all things come together and this is all part of the step back process you know close up and then back close up and then back <laughs> and experimenting you know i for the before covid again i want to always say that you know how things can change for a photographer how you evolve till covid around 8 years of my photography i used to shoot only natural light natural light is nothing but the sun and the sun bounces through the wall or mirror or whatever you know and just falls on the person's face natural light all good people used to ask me why don't you carry a flash i'm like no flash is for idiots i don't need flash sun is my flash <laughs> maybe arrogance but then you realize that you can be better than that you know so after covid these are my pictures i carry a flash now a big big soft box as big as this a big light stand a big light inside that you know strobe all put together you come that far it's a bit of a hassle you are traveling it's too heavy and all that but why not you know when you have opportunity to make better pictures better to learn something new better to experiment and become better at what you do so this is natural light the sun this is with all this artificial lights with strobes same here natural light here pre covid and post covid this one here so if you come to ladakh you will do this <laughs> we are planning a trip in june we are just talking <laughs> so here again natural light beautiful picture no doubts on that but with the strobe you change the game all together and next thing is to keep it simple we live in a world of gears i know shaji sun sells gears buy all shaji sun's gears not a problem but when it comes to cameras you just need two actually you just need two things one is at least for me with my experience 2470 and 7200 and that's it in my case i don't need any other lens you know because i've been through that journey buying everything in the market you know i knew you need everything <laughs> whatever lens comes out you need that lens because it's never enough you always feel one more will do the work but then you start selling everything eventually as you grow as a photographer your kit doesn't become big it becomes small <laughs> i don't know about you for me at least today i just carry a 2470 and a 7200 and that's about it it does everything that you need to do portraits landscapes name it yeah yes for astro you need a wide angle i agree there but otherwise most often this to are enough for streets you know when you're walking on the streets i use 2470 because 24 mm is wide enough 
If it's not wide enough, take a step back. It's wide enough. If it's not wide enough, take one more step back. Now it's definitely wide enough. It's all about just going back with 24mm. You will, be, you will be wide enough eventually. So all these are with 2470. You know, this range of things you can do with 2470 is unbelievable. 7200, as I said, all my landscapes comes from 7200. All these other portraits and travel photography stuff comes with 7200. It's such a perfect lens, the 70 to 200. You just can't go wrong with it. So two lens and the job is done. When it comes to portraits, I have a very simple formula. When I'm shooting men, I shoot 2470. Because men, we have a face which is more rigid and more raw and more rough. So men look good with a 2470. It's just my formula. Like these guys, you know, it's always 2470. Maybe at 70mm, it doesn't matter. But when it comes to women, I go 7200. Because 7200 has a way of crafting the face. Because more you zoom, more you create that you know, curve, uh, like a shaping of the face. You know, it matches the uh, female uh, face structures. So whenever I shoot a women, I go with 7200. For men, it's 2470. So if you have these two lenses, literally you're playing with these two lenses and you get away with everything. So these are all with 7200. You can see how beautifully their face is being carved. And of course, you know, uh, I don't know why it's written. Keep it simple, okay. This is a mismatched slide. Okay, let me just skip that. But anyways, you know, we are talking about experimenting, I guess. Let me get back. Yeah, this is part of the experiment. Coming to the experiment part, which I was talking earlier, I used flash, I told you, instead of the natural light. I evolved myself. Meanwhile, there was a thing called drone. You know, I always thought I'll never use drone. Who uses drone? But then COVID happened, and you're stuck at home. For us, home is Dubai. So you can't travel. So I wanted to experiment with something more to evolve myself as a photographer. Things are running dry. You need to create you know, as a photographer. That's your bloodline. So that's when I took a drone without knowing what I was going to shoot because I thought UA would be okay, okay for drones. But when I flew, my mind just blew. You know, UA is such a beautiful country to fly. This is my backyard. I stay in Ajman, and that's my backyard in Ajman. You know, I didn't, I didn't even know my home was so beautiful. It's crazy. This is in Razal Kaima, which also won a lot of awards. This particular picture, camels floating in water. So. These are all with another new equipment called drone, just because I wanted to experiment. And I also wanted to create during COVID, the dry days of COVID. So these are all Sharjah and etc., which I never knew was so beautiful. These are all Maliha. This again is from Sharjah. Who knew it looks so beautiful from top? And I even Instagram is so crazy. One guy even recognized this car in Instagram, the owner of this car. He knew the drive he was making with his friends. He told, this is my friend Ahmed, this is my friend Mohammed, whatever. He told, this is me. I told, okay, fine. <laughs> then he bought the picture from me, you know, local. So inst through Instagram, he found, and by the cars, he recognized that it was his gang. Yeah, it's crazy how it works. So another thing is to connect deeper, which I, I have a habit of traveling to a place over and over again. You know, I've been to Ladakh. 20 times maybe. I've been to Varanasi 16 times. So similarly, there are many, many places which I repeat and visit. One is I do tours. People want to come, I go again and again. Other one is helps me to establish a contact. You know, I don't take a picture and forget about them because I have a chance to meet them again. I go every year. I have a chance to meet them over and over and over again. I see them grow literally. This girl back in 2013, maybe I took this shot. I went back last year. She was all grown up now. And there's something called NFT, if you know. NFT is a place where you sell your pictures. I was selling my pictures in NFT. This picture had sold for a good amount of money. And while selling itself, I had made a promise to the person who was buying that if you buy my picture, 50% will go to the girl. I'll find the girl and pay her 50% because it's her picture. So it sold, all that happened, I had the money in my hand. Now it was time to find her. I know where the place is. But you don't know our home. We just find them on the road and we just take the picture. So I stop my vehicle, talk to the villagers. The whole village got together because there's money involved. People are excited. Okay, then we need to find that girl. <laughs> so they all went in different, different directions. Finally, they found her, bought her here. Then we went to her home. This is all our photographer gang. And that's his, her father. We're all sitting together. And finally, I had a chance to give the money to her. And it was beautiful, you know, like when you get a chance to go back after so many years. <laughs> and they're all grown up. And this is an, one, another girl. This is my most 
like my most favorite portrait I ever taken and this has sold for a very good amount in NFT but before NFT I used to visit this girl anyway this I took in maybe 2014 in 2015 I gave her a picture because that's all I could afford I gave her a print next year when I went back I gave her a book we print books every year and her picture was part of the book that's mom her mom and her all shy and beautiful <laughs> Now I make a point, every time I go, I visit this girl. That's the first visit I do, and then everything else. <laughs> Photography next. So next year I sold the picture and I gave her 25% of the proceeds because it is a good amount of money. So I met her and I think it will play now. It's all grown up, you can see in the last six years. <laughs> So this is the one of the most beautiful things I do. At least whenever I get a chance, I always make sure I go back and visit them. And these kids, you know, you've seen so many Buddhist uh, pictures before with candles and everything. It's not like you walk into a monastery and you say, kids, hold candles, I'll take a picture. They'll kick you out, <laughs> you know, because it's a religious place. But that happens because I am connected to them for so many years. You know, I, every time I go, I take a, I think you guys all met her maybe, yeah. So whenever I go, I make sure I take something back to them, you know, whether it's a cricket bat and ball and whatever or whatever, you know, whatever I can give. I always go back once I gave them the book, like you see here. So it's that relationship which goes a long way. You know, otherwise you, you can't just enter a monastery and make pictures. But you get a chance to do that because you make that deeper connection. The next part is to get surprised by the journey. I was just asking him, uh, Florian, how do you travel? You know, do you plan? He said, I just fly. So I think that's one of the best things you can do. Just fly to a country and let the place bring something new to you. You know, if you Google too much and see too, way too many pictures, by the time you reach, there's no surprise element. You know, there's nothing to make you, the spark won't happen because you've seen it all. So sometimes you just have to travel and let the place do the job, like in this case. I can't even pronounce the name of this festival, which happens in Northeast India, in a deep corner of India. I didn't even know it existed, this place. You know, it was just through the word of mouth. You know, you're in the place and someone tells, a taxi guy says, there's a festival, go to that corner. So we ended up there. And what a beautiful festival, you know, I love patterns. I'm a guy who shoots a lot of patterns. This was the surprise element there, you know. These are all the pictures from there. And also Kumbh Mela, you know, everyone knows Kumbh Mela. We have seen enough documentaries about Kumbh Mela, the greatest you know, uh, gathering of humans on planet Earth. I think 50, 5 crore people, 5 crore is how much, 50 million? I don't know, <laughs> yeah, huge amount of people, you know, just every inch of the land is taken over by people like this. So the, when I went there, there's no point of Googling and seeing where to stay and how to go and all that. Just go there and let the place do the job. You know, it was very, very hard. I won't go back to this festival ever again. I had enough, <laughs> but it's such a beautiful place. You know, people look very rough and you know, we hear a lot of stories. They'll beat you up, there, this and that, but they're such cool, kind people. You know, I could make so many portraits sitting in with them in a camp, talking to them and smoking some stuff that they smoke. So all those things put together, you end up with this beautiful picture. The place will speak to you if you just go there. And seeing different, very, very important as a photographer. All we are trying to do is to see different. Every one of us, all those pictures in that which are exhibited are there because they saw something new, something fresh, something different. That's the whole point of shooting, uh, doing photography. Copy paste is no good. You know, you have to do something new. Train your eyes to see something new. So this is Burj Khalifa. I don't think many of you have seen Burj Khalifa like this. Why does that happen? Why do I get to see the picture like this? Because I took a lens which no one takes, you know. Usually people take 1424 wide angle Burj Khalifa and the whole downtown. I used a 600 mm. I was going to a rooftop. I told my Nikon guys, give me a 600, I'm going to a rooftop. They're like, rooftop 600? I told, yeah, why not? You know, sometimes you have to surprise yourself and you get to see things which otherwise you won't see. This is Burj Khalifa from a rooftop with a 600 mm, which gives a completely different perspective. This is just the usual Dubai Marina and all that. You know, at the end of the day, you change the focal length and you surprise yourself. That was my idea here. For months together, I was using only a long lens and going to rooftop to see what I can see. That's Burjuman. This again, Burj Khalifa. Who knew the roundabout looks so beautiful in Burj Khalifa? You never see it like this. So that's how beautiful it looks when you change the perspective. This again, City Walk Dubai with the maybe 300 mm, just for a change. This again, Taj in JLT. 
And also seeing different is this, you know, which is Holi. We just came back from Holi. Holi is a crazy festival, you know, you, you know Holi, festival of colors. They throw a lot of colors on you, which is part of the game. But what we don't really like photographers is this, the water which comes <laughs> along with it. They throw heaps of water, buckets of water on you. That's part of the game. If they see a photographer, water is coming to you. But usually we as photographers, we want to protect our camera and this and that. We say no, no, no and we just start running. But I thought, why not just change the game, you know, see differently. So this kid, these kids are the ones who mainly throw the water. Instead of running away, I told, okay, bring it on. I was ready with my composition, half wall white, half wall yellowish colored, warm and cool tones together. And I just stood there. I know kids will come. When they see a photographer with a camera, they will blast the water on me. I'm like, that's an opportunity. You know, I can make a new photo, fresh photo rather than running away. So that's the picture which happened here. You can see the fla uh, splash of water and all that. But at the end of the day, just because I wanted to see something differently, you end up with these pictures. That's how camera look at the end of it. <laughs> they look great. So this again, you know, pointing to the water rather than running away. You know, these are buckets of water. It's coming on you. You know that. Next second, I'll be completely wet. My camera will be wet. But why not just try, you know, and you get something fresh. And here again, seeing differently, seeing from a point of view where you get a pattern which is broken with a single drum. I never seen these pictures from Holi because people are mostly busy with the usual generic stuff, you know. And it's very busy, it's very hard, I understand. But once you put your mind to it, you end up with some unique pictures which no one has seen. So all these pictures from Holi. This again part of uh, evolving as a photographer. I make portraits all the time, a kid in the front, nice colors on the face, a photo. But in this case, just a bit of splash of colors, you know, one of my friend just throwing the colors to create that extra bit of uh, layering in the picture. Again, this woman and uh, the kid, I found her outside the house. I could have made that picture right there with the baby and the mother. But then I saw this window outside their house, which had a heart. I'm like, okay, this mother, motherly love kind of a situation happening here. So I just composed it. I took the people in, put them in the perfect light with the window in the background. You create that environmental portrait with the meaning, you know, with a touch of extra. I could have ended up only with this, but now you added a layer. That's the part of seeing different. This I already showed you. And exploring new avenues. This one, this slide was supposed to come. It came earlier, but I'll just skip this. Okay, exploring new avenues. Again, this all drone happened because of one virus, you know, which came in COVID. <laughs> so again, you can't travel. What do you do? You're sitting at uh, this wonderful place called Dubai, but stuck at home. So eventually they said, okay, one or two guys can travel around in the country in your car, lockdown, after lockdown. So that's when I took up this new hobby, which is deep space photography, which is very, very hard. I never had a clue how to do it. I don't even have gears to do it. Number of people helped me with gears. Shahjisan helped in his own way. Nikon gave certain cameras and lenses to try this out. And of, to, of course, YouTube is your best friend. You learn a lot in YouTube. In COVID, what you have to do? Just sit and watch YouTube all day. So I learned this whole night from around seven o'clock at night till six in the morning. We would be out there in the desert shooting these things. It's an overnight process. You take thousands of pictures and then put them together using many, many softwares. So again, a new avenue. It's, it was a chance to learn something fresh. So these are all the equipments which comes along with it. And that's the editing process. It's very, very hard. I won't do it again, maybe. I still have the equipments, but it's so hard, it just sips, sucks the blood out of you. <laughs> so, but the pictures you see, it's all in the night sky. You know, when, when you look at night sky, it's all dark and black. And these are all the things which are sitting there in the sky. So again, it's part of my evolution, exploring new avenues and also wildlife. After COVID, the only place which opened after COVID was Kenya. India was closed, everything was closed. And I'm like, okay, if Kenya is open, we are going to Kenya, simple as that. So we made a number of trips to Kenya and wonderful things which I never thought I would shoot, but I absolutely in love with wildlife photography now. So these are all the pictures which came along. This is the great migration which happens there. It's a Disneyland out there. And also another thing of speaking of new avenues, how we can evolve as a photographer. There's something, we all know time-lapse. We do time-lapse with our iPhone, very, very easy. But time-lapse with iPhone is okay for 
stories maybe in instagram but if you're doing some serious time lapse you need to learn a lot of new things and that was another challenge i always used to avoid time lapse because it's so complicated he does time lapse florian uh, this is a software called lr time lapse which can be hard to get through you know it's very slow process and blah 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 there's a lot to learn I always avoided it, avoided it, but then the COVID times, free times to sit at home and learn something. So that's when I started learning another new thing in my layer of photography, which is time lapse. And I learned it so well. I practiced in Dubai so much before making the big move. Then I went to New York just for the sake of time lapse. I just wanted to do time lapse of New York for no reason. So we went to New York and that's how it looks now. <laughs> It may be a 20 second video, but to learn that it took more than at least three years. A lot of Dubai rooftops, a lot of you know, f uh, experiments, a lot of failures, a lot of garbage. And then finally you start fine tuning it and get to learn something new. So whenever you can learn something new, jump into that opportunity. So feeding your imagination, it's another very important thing that I learned and added as a layer into my photography, which is your imagination can go crazy. You're an artist, you know, like Shaji was saying, use your imagination, participate in the contest. That's how it works, you know, use your brains, you know, think how can you be a better artist. For instance, this image, it's taken with two different, uh, it's two different shots, literally. One in the evening of this one, with maybe a 400 mm, and this at night with a wide angle. Then I put them together with Photoshop, of course. Before COVID, I would never touch Photoshop. I didn't even have Photoshop. I am a Lightroom guy at that time. I used to say Photoshop is for losers <laughs> because who wants Photoshop? But then I realized I was missing out on a whole new world because whatever you can imagine, you can create. So COVID changed that game as well. I learned Photoshop and now I can imagine all these things and create these photos. Same here, one shot for the foreground, one for the uh, background and put them together and you have an image. It's all your head, you know, your head creating the picture. Same here. And same with this, you know, this is real shot but every these sparks don't just happen all together there's one shot with this one another shot with this one third one fourth one fifth sixth then you put them all together even to think of that you need to know a basic of basics of photoshop if you don't even know photoshop you won't even think of these images same here you know you can't just focus on everything at once you know you focus take a shot of this then wait for the moon to come take a shot of the moon then blend them together otherwise everything will not be sharp to imagine this you need to learn Photoshop. <laughs> I was just telling them how important Photoshop is. You need to learn Photoshop. <laughs> Same here, you know, lightning doesn't happen like this. It's multiple pictures put together. Here, it's a part of imagination. Again, I was taking this picture at average base camp from a helicopter. You don't see Milky Way at night like this, you know, when you're flying in a helicopter. So I took the picture with my camera of this one, and then I blended it with a Milky Way shot from Everest. Put together, that's the picture. So, so on and so forth. You are just telling, you are telling me. It looks like a painting. It looks like this in real. <laughs> yeah, this is a real raw picture. That's the output you get from Nikon. But then you apply your artistic skills and polish it up and make it look like it went to a very expensive beauty parlor. It looks beautiful now. <laughs> yeah. So that's your job from here to there. Nothing has changed. It's just polishing, you know, putting your style into it. I wanted my wildlife pictures to look dreamy, not natural. That's my style in that case. I want my portraits to look natural, my wildlife to look dreamy. It's all your taste. So same, one of the beautiful thing of uh, nowadays is AI. You know, we all know AI is going crazy. And Photoshop has AI now. You can do generative fill. This was the picture, 400 mm. The animal was too close. The ear got chopped. I would not even use this picture because I don't like something to be chopped like that. It was out of my, it was sitting in my hard disk for the last two years. I didn't even test this picture. Then the AI came. Now you can fill things. You know, I just put in, whatever you see here after this is done by AI. It completes the picture. <laughs> the ear was missing, AI fills the ear. You need to work a few times, but eventually it completes the picture. The new world we live in, it's absolutely scary and also beautiful at the same time. So this is the magic of AI. <laughs> so adapting, AI is part of adapting as well. And nowadays we stay in the world of Instagram, Reels, everything is vertical. 
Though gone are those days when you used to shoot horizontal videos. Now you see everyone just goes vertical. It's like second nature. But that's the world we live in, you know, you need to make reels. Uh, there's no other way out. <laughs> so why not do it? But how can you do it? There are two ways. One, be lazy, shoot something with your iPhone or with your camera, bring it to your iPhone, do it in some in shot or cap cut or whatever. Very rough job on your mobile and just put it out. Good enough, maybe you'll get the followers doing that also. But there's a chance to learn. You know, that's what I'm trying to say, evolve. You can learn some new software. For videos, you need if you're really serious about it, Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, there are many, many proper, you know, desktop video setups. I had no clue how to use Final Cut, but I had to learn because the world is moving in this direction. So learn something new. So I started shooting vertical and editing them with my Final Cut Pro. It's easy. Now, after playing with it for three, four years, things are very, very easy because you learned something new. So it's all part of evolution, you know. All these are done with, I'll just mute it. All these are done with Final Cut Pro. I can do with my phone, but why not learn something new and do it in a professional way? You are at the end of the day creating something good, you know, not some garbage like you see in Instagram half the time. So try to learn something new and do better job than what others are doing. So these are all with camera plus Final Cut Pro. So you get that perfection, you know, when you're trying to do with a proper software, you get that uh, great hold on what you're editing and you can be a better, you can execute things better. And being a critic is very, very important. We shoot a lot. It's a world of 256 GB cards, 1 TB cards nowadays, crazy in your camera itself. You end up shooting a lot of garbage. It doesn't mean everything you shoot is great. You need to be your own critic. You know, if you're not your harshest critic, then who's gonna do the job, you know, you have to be your own critic. So all these pictures, which are all okay, it's all nice and beautiful, but these are all my, what I call my garbage pictures, you know, they'll never see the day of light. They only come in this light, they'll never come on Instagram, they'll never come on my website, because they, are, they didn't make the cut. Though they are good, but you have to put yourself in that position where good is not good enough. <laughs> Just put it beyond, you know, what's the X factor, what makes a picture great? Those things are missing, the X factors are missing. So be ready to discard a lot of pictures. It's easy to take pictures, but to make really good pictures, you need to have that extra layer of critique in you. So these are all the pictures which never come out. They're all dead in my hard disk. So finally, sharpness uh, on my trips, I always see, you know, people, especially those who come for the first time, we all have that habit of shooting ISO 100, maybe 200, maybe 400. Beyond that, we don't push the ISO because noise and grain, people don't like all that. But sometimes if the situation demands, if there's a moment in front of you which demands 6,000 ISO, go for 6,000 ISO. If it demands 10,000 ISO, go for 10,000 ISO. You know, there's nothing wrong with 10,000 ISO. You'll get some grains, you'll get some noise, but I think we need to move beyond that. This is just a slide to show how ISO behaves nowadays with all the modern cameras. It's crazy, you know, it's like 1,000 ISO. You can't see even a single grain. Maybe 10 years back, it would be a garbage. But today we have gone to a level where ca cameras have become so good, you can shoot any ISO you want. This is 1,000 because the situation demanded 1,000. 1 to 5 zero in this case. 1,600, 2,000. If not for 2000, I could not take this picture, you know. So when situation demands, push the eyes. So don't be worried about noise and all that. Two, five, this is three, two, this is 4,000, this is 6,400. Mostly when I shoot Milky Ways, it's always six, four, because that's like the sweet spot. So this is 10,000 ISO and still the picture is clean enough. You know, it has some noise, but who cares? You know, it's clean enough. 12,800, still good enough. This is 20,000 ISO because the only way to take this shot was 20,000 because it's such a slow shutter, you're sitting on a boat. You just have to push the ISO. This is 32,000 ISO and still the picture is good enough. So that's how far the cameras have come. Nikon D5, Z9, they are really, really good with high ISO. So push that ISO. Sharpness is not everything in photography. So finally, your camera is good enough. I never get to show this slide in Nikon presentation because it's Nikon. But here I can do it <laughs> because I'm free. Yeah. So camera, any camera is good enough. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. But by Nikon, they are the best. But any camera is good enough. <laughs> so this is Canon uh, 100D. 
I oh, there's a time in my life where I wanted to try all the cameras in the market. I would just go to my friend, take a camera from them, three hours. It's like a small personal project. Take the camera for three hours, walk around Dubai, make a picture, give it back to them. I used to call them, shoot them all, shoot every camera in the market to see what they're capable of. Maybe this picture I should submit to you. What is the theme? Yeah, but there is a fresh picture. Before. Oh, fresh. Okay, this is not fresh. <laughs> This is from our own Bardubai uh, there aside. So this is Canon 100D, one of the lowest end camera, but still such a beautiful picture. 550D, a street photography, 600D, and this is 70D from Canon, 70D Mark one, 70 70D Mark two. Every camera is good enough, that's all I'm trying to say. It's all about you, how you see. 5D Mark two. again, this is another good picture. I shouldn't have shown this to Shaji. I could have submitted this. <laughs> 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, that's about the Canon, which I've used. Nikon 3100, my first camera, 7000, 7200, D500, D750, D780, D800, my second camera, D810, D810A, which is an Astro camera. It's a 850, D4S, which is my third camera, D5, D6, Z6, Z62, Z7, Z72. Fuji, see I can show all my brands now. Fuji X100S, X100F, which is great camera, X-T1, X-Pro2, which is brilliant. Leica, why not, I have a Leica also. The worst investment I have made is this camera, but it's still a good camera. GoPro, why not? Even GoPro can do the job. So I even have phone photos which I didn't include. But we all know that any camera can take the shot. It's all about your eye and your vision. Otherwise, you're just making excuses. So that's about it. So Shazi San, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> no questions? If anybody has questions, please. Anything else? Any questions, please? Please feel free. I think I'm good. I made, made them all sleep. <laughs> any prize or any gifts or something? Tripod head? <laughs> Sorry? He doesn't allow me. I can participate, she's saying. Of course you can participate. You said old picture, new pictures. With a new picture. Ah, okay. I need to shoot one more. No, no, so you just take the same um, <laughs> composition. Composition, yeah. You can anyone can participate. Even me can part me I can participate. How do you know it's new or old? <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll look at the X if <laughs> no, that's that that's why that's why we were asking like you know anything that you I'll can alter do. My X if. Yeah. So in the X if I only shoot JPEG, you know that. Right? Yeah, that's fine. More than enough. <laughs> like, we, uh, and then you alter. Huh? No, no, <laughs> <I'll just. laughs> Anyhow, um, thanks, thanks, Subodh. As thanks always, as always, like you know, uh, it's it's a it's a pleasure having Subodh and uh, you know photographers like um, so uh, Florian and LD kind of people in our platform, and you know like that that too. This this year, uh, out of these 20 days, uh, we got 13 nationalities. 13, 13 nationalities uh, did this session and uh, yeah so we will continue doing this kind of activities throughout the era of as long as photography and content creation is on and I personally you know uh, took this as a kind of hobby for me now I'm enjoying whatever I'm doing now so no no retirement so we all you know love uh, things what we really want to do you know and then you know you keep get a lot of motivations by means of seeing all these things because I was also like Manasa, me and the team were there once uh, for the Holi, so I know exactly the kind of craziness of Holi. And as uh, Subodh said, you know, like you will never go for that kind of uh, Kumbhamala kind of stuff. I will never go to Holi again. <laughs> you even said, yeah. But, Huh? Uh, we went to uh, Nandagao and uh, the Madura, uh, Barsana, Barsana, the real place. Yeah, the real place. Uh, 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 Kanpur. Kanpur? Kanpur? Seven days. Oh. And, and it's day and night. I mean, I'm telling you, you can imagine, you can think of anything, anything that they can throw on you, they'll throw on you. But here it is decent, right? Oh. Here it is. Oh, no. Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> no, the same, no? No distance. Really? The usual. Yeah. Ah, okay. Ladies get targeted. Ah, yeah, that will. I'm fine. Have you seen that Lakman? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, you actually, I mean, that's like a cul-de-sac. It's the Vrindavan, Barsana, Nandgaon, yeah. Mathura. Yeah. That's the, that's the craziest story. But anyhow, like we we made two three rounds. That two three rounds made me really crazy. Like you know, like you have to you 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 just stand there. I'll tell you the truth. You keep going. No, Shaji sir, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. It's not two three rounds which made it crazy. Yeah. Because having those Jack Daniel chocolates with whiskey inside. Yeah. Ah, that of course. That made it crazy. That that made me okay. At least to stay there, stay there. Okay, anyhow, um, thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks again to Barjuman Mal. Give us a lot of opportunity. That's why I'm giving giving lot of thanks. <laughs> Anyhow, um, we have amazing people over here, and all of uh, you are super. And uh, we have so many caliber in one and everyone among you. So this platform is for all of us. Uh, you know, I want to have uh, these kind of posters going into the kind of way that it can go max. Uh, we, hmm? Of course. <laughs> so yeah, so it's not for the Guinness record or anything. Like, you know, I keep talking every evening, follow iBrand Connect. And I say one more thing, please don't think that it is just to get a lot of followers for me. Literally it is. Okay, I'm, I'm on live, right? Okay, anyhow, <laughs> it is for, <laughs> it, it is for, understanding uh, the kind of uh, activities what we are doing on a monthly basis. So every month, uh, without uh, fail, uh, we do four events. Uh, four events in a month, which makes us 52 minimum events in a year. So always we overdo. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, Flor 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 Florian is a doctor doctoral student now these days. So last time when he came to Exposure, he was telling, you are going to be my ta target to understand about like how crazy you are doing these things. You, you mentioned that to me, right? It's not the craziness, it is like, you know, the, that you guys are going around with the cameras, shooting these kind of pictures. For me, I love uh, doing these kind of things, yeah? I don't know what am I going to do tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks again, Subodh. Thanks, and uh, we, we can have, uh, we can sit here, we can sit relax, have some coffee, we can have discussions and there are many, uh, like uh, today we have Jay, <laughs> you know, he is also into a totally different field of uh, art. Uh, okay, uh, can I just give you an idea? Subodh, I know Subodh, Subodh connected me with Floor. Floor came into my, uh, our, our event. Florian connected me with Jay. Then, you know, like these are the kind of way that we get connected. And then at the end, you know, like it, it, it becomes, uh, you know, a kind of complete relationship. Uh, you know, a floor one day he was just coming, calling me during his trip. He said, Shaji, I was just walking around on those Volcana thing and, you know, I lost one of my leg of <laughs> Leo photo. What can I do? The leg of the tripod. Leg of the tripod. <laughs> he, he lost that, yeah. So he said, okay, once you're back here in Dubai airport, just call me. I'll get one for you. <laughs> no, that's actually to be, I'm so happy that, you know, the kind of brands that we have, they support us like anything. Uh, last time, like Rami, Rami Dippo ha had some issue with his G4, I just replaced him, yeah. Immediately, you know, like we called and he said, replace, that's it. So that is something which, which is really uh, good in uh, having these kind of brands. Uh, anyone want to come? Because I'm, <laughs> okay, one more thing, can I just do a promotion for Flo? <laughs> no, no, no. It's not a promotion, but I really loved the kind of work that he did. Um, that is two years. Like he was. Uh, which company you were working for? Uh, LA? No. Before Interrail. In in. Interrail. Interrail. You are a chief operating officer, right? He was a chief operating officer, and he himself is a DJ. And uh, multi, 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 <laughs> multi, 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 yeah. Like, like Subodh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> Subodh, Subodh was in uh, uh, pharmacy utils, right? He was a marketing manager. Of, I still remember he, Subodh was telling about he's going to resign. You remember that night, like you know, when we were in Holi? I'm going to resign because I want to be a free, free bird. <laughs> so now have a look at guys, the kind of things that he did for the two years. And he created an amazing booklet. You can have a look at it. Amazing. You know, two years, 45 countries, right? Something like that. Around 45 countries. Perfect.
Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.